Nina Shanga Niki Lewa Wewe ni zaidi And the most gracious day He has allowed us To meet once more So not physically To have a fellowship But in the fellowship of the spirit of God I want to welcome you to this service of receiving and hearing the word of God. I welcome you from wherever you are watching us from. I thank God because he is so powerful. He is everywhere. And he is all knowing. He understands us better than any other. I would love, like to also thank God because he is the only one important. He is the only one who is all powerful, omnipotent. He is the only one who is omniscient that does not happen to be the case of our enemy, the devil. And thereby, we have a God who is not limited, but an enemy who is really limited. The devil cannot be at any one place at one time. But our God feels everywhere in Jesus' name. You're welcome. Let us pray so that we may hear the word of God. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for giving us an opportunity to experience the power of your love as much as you have given us your son, Jesus Christ through whom we have become heirs of eternal life. Thank you, Lord, as we lift our eyes to you. May the Holy Spirit help us to receive the word. May the Holy Spirit bring healing to my hearers. May the Holy Spirit bring deliverance, wisdom, and knowledge for the purpose of which we are doing this live broadcast. Thank you, Lord. You bless Kenya and every one of us. In Jesus' name we do pray and also give you praise. Say amen wherever you are. I also want you to join me again. I feel blessed today when I say this is the day the Lord has made that we may rejoice and be glad in it. Not because there is every reason for us to rejoice. I believe and know in the midst of this hard and tough time in the whole world, we still need to keep on trusting on the Lord. Today I want to share a word that I believe through the Spirit of God will give you some strength to continue to keep you standing and after these hard and tough times you may be a victor. All those who have been praying with us and praying with the saints of God, we need to continue in prayer and thanking God because we are nearing to come out of this hard time in Jesus' name. I focus my eyes unto the Lord who really is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us remain focused in Jesus' name. We are going to read the word of God from the book of Proverbs chapter number 4 and verses 23 to 27. your heart with all diligence 
for out of it spring for out of it spring the issues of life put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established do not turn to the right or to the left remove your foot from all evil praise the lord i would like us to see verses 26 ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established i want to declare in the name of the lord jesus as you receive this word today, the Lord will let your ways be established in Jesus' name. The Lord will make your family stand and be established in Jesus' name. I declare your business will be established today in the name of Jesus. For really, the Lord has begun a good work in your life and the enemy cannot stop it in Jesus' name. I want us also to read the book of Luke chapter 6 verses number 45. And then after that we shall be reading 2 Chronicles 25 verses 1 and 2. And we shall be ready to move in the word of God in Jesus name. Luke chapter 6 verses 45. good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good and an evil man out of an evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth picketh. hallelujah repeat after me for out of the heart for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So if a man is evil, he will speak evil. If a man is good, he will speak good. But today I want us to understand my topic is about God your heart. God your heart, you have guarded your life. Guard your heart, you have guarded your life. The last scripture is Second Chronicles 25, verses 1 and 2. Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord but with but not with a royal heart I want us now it happened as soon as the kingdom was established for him that he executed his servants who had murdered his father that was the heart. Let's uh, remain there for a while. I would like us to think through this time ahead of us about guarding our heart. It is Solomon, the wise king, who gained his wisdom after giving an acceptable sacrifice from God. When he gave, he built the house of God. He gave sacrifices through the night. Then the Lord asked Solomon, so I would wish to put it to you this Proverbs is one of the wisdoms of this man of God who was an anointed king 
and he was a son of David. And he says, God, there is another version I was reading. The English Standard Version, and it says, Keep your heart with all vigilance. As we follow this one, we have read, says, Keep your heart with all diligence. But what I want you to see is what this man of God, Solomon, had in mind God with all their riches and he says out of heart at the frost springs of life So when we talk of the heart, I may not be in a position to really talk so much about the heart. But for the purpose of our study, I would wish to say, let's use the heart to represent our thoughts. Let's use the heart to represent the words we speak. Let's use the heart to represent the decisions we make in life. Let's use the heart to represent our choices. I repeat again. When he speaks out of the heart flows issues of life, I want us to use that concerning our thoughts. Concerning the words we speak, concerning the decisions we make, concerning our choices in life as an individual person. And he says, What I would wish to bring out the condition of the heart of man is very important. It is very important from the fact that it always determines, it always determines how a person responds to life situations. It always determines how a person behaves in circumstances. And it in part de determines how a person will agree to things and disagree to things. So that's why the Bible is saying it is a fountain where issues of life. This man still says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Even during this time of COVID-19, even this during this time which is very hard and has appeared to be very difficult your decisions will be determined by the condition of your heart if you say I cannot make it I guess you may never make it if you say I will not die I believe you will not die today I have come to declare you will not die. I have a come with a wisdom, a word of wisdom that the Bible says we focus our eyes and we focus our eyes on purpose. What is your purpose today? What can you declare today? I shall face tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to say it. I may know what the future holds but I know who holds the future can you celebrate that with me but I mean I may not know what tomorrow holds but in my heart 
I have believed in him who holds the future. So the future is good, although today there might be some darkness. God said, let there be right, and there was right. And today that powerful word of God, Jesus is light. I have the light of God. So I declare in the name of Jesus, darkness will not continue hovering over your life. Darkness will not continue hovering over your family. Darkness will not continue hovering over every business you did. You started before COVID-19 and now there is nothing that you can show. But I declare in the name of Jesus, there is life in him you have believed in Jesus' name. Let's continue. When we get our hearts, we get our hearts because the heart is the source. Your heart is the source 
of everything you do in life, whether good or bad, and you have come from your heart. Guard it. Be vigilant. And number three, your heart, and this is very, very, very important. Your heart is constantly under attack. Your heart is constantly under attack. That's why Paul in Ephesians is put on the whole armor of God. Remember about the priest prince of righteousness. When you remove the priest prince of righteousness, your heart is open. Your heart is prone to defeat. Hallelujah. I see. The devil will always attack. Not only the devil. Even people will attack. Demon says. They are setting their balls. They are setting their arrows on the balls. So that they may shoot at the righteous. We are constantly on a battlefield. Receive grace and the help of God in Jesus' name. In the battle, there is no signal for battle. Write that down. The reason why you should guard your heart. The reason why guarding means protecting. means children. The reason why your heart should be children. I will show you, I will tell you another one. But I want you to see here. The Bible records in Mark chapter 4, 35 to 41. On that same day when evening had come, he said to them, let cross over the sea. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And the other little boats were also with him. And a great wind storm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already feeling. I want you to, to underline that. The boat was already feeling. But he was in the stand asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and he rebuked the weed and said to the sea, And like this, Peace, be still. And the weed ceased, and there was great calm. But he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and they said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's be there. We rest there. Look here. Jesus and his disciples, I would say that it was just an ordinary day after business, and they decided to relocate to another place across the Sea of Galilee. Hallelujah. It was just a, a day like any other. And the Bible records, it was not just Jesus' boat. But there were other boats along. And the Bible says, Jesus, when he entered the boat, maybe because he was tired after preaching and doing the work of the kingdom of God, he needed to at least rest. May the Lord give you rest in Jesus' name. I say may the Lord give you rest. In the midst of COVID-19, may you get a time and relax. May you get a time and be and have peace in the name of Jesus Christ. It is possible 
I will tell you it is possible. I will show you it is possible. You can rest in the midst of a storm. We have followed the one who is the master of the universe. We have followed the one who is all powerful. Jesus is not like any other. And when he, you have him in your life, you know the Bible says that in Christ Jesus, we have, but we have been received, we have become partakers of divine nature. In divine nature, we are able to get the rest. And that's where we are focused on. I would wish to put it to you. We don't need to wait until we go to heaven to have peace. Hallelujah. We don't need to wait until we go to heaven to have some rest. You can rest in the midst of the storm when you have guarded your heart. The Bible says he was comfortable. He was sleeping. Jesus was not lazy. He was not sleeping because he was lazy. He was sleeping maybe because he was resting after hard work. And in his sleep, you see, he took a pillow. I can see he really was wanted to relax. May the grace of God give you a comfort that can make you rest and relax in the midst of these hard tough times. Lift your hand and say, the storms will be over soon. I say the storms will be over soon. Look at Jesus. The, we have two categories of people. When the storm arose, number one, the disciples were afraid. The disciples feared. What was their reaction? They got upset about Jesus. Hallelujah. Get this right. They were not so, they did not have a very good attitude towards Jesus. I want you to see. I wish you can get that. And they feared exceedingly. And they said, no. The other part, it is verses. The same symbol. Yeah, and a great. Wind. Yeah, verses that are eight. But he was in the stand on a pillow, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said, Teacher, do you not care? Hallelujah. That may seem even very rude. May the Lord help us. I say, May the Lord help us. They were rude, they were upset. Do you know why? The boat was filling with water. And they were seeing we are going to perish. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are not going to perish. So, the attitude of the heart matters so much. The condition of your heart matters so much when you are in crisis, when you are in trouble. When you are in a challenge, the disciples who are challenged, at least they knew Jesus can do something. I don't know whether they believe he will do anything. They went to him in a very upset attitude. Don't you care? But we can celebrate, celebrate with me. When they went to Jesus, he did not, he was not even affected by their rudeness. Hallelujah. He was not. What did he do? Even he did not speak to him, to them fast. And that's why I would wish to advise you, cast your burden unto Jesus. 
for he really cares. He is concerned even today what you are going through. He is concerned what we are going through. He knows you don't have food. He knows you don't have that other item that is very necessary this time. He knows your children need the needs of your children he knows. So cast your burden unto him. There are two attitudes. One will cast the burden unto Jesus and the other one will be upset by the situation. May the Lord deliver you from the second one. In Jesus' name. You know what he did? Jesus, he woke up. He woke up. Number two. What did he do? He rebuilt the weed. He rebuilt the source of the fear. I pray in the name of Jesus that he will deal with the source of your fear today in Jesus' name. He will deal with what is making you afraid. And he did not just keep quiet. He said, be still. And what happened? The Bible says, the wind ceased and there was great calm. Celebrate Jesus. Help me to celebrate Jesus. There was a great calm. So, this demonstration of power we have been talking about. Demonstration of power happens from a heart that is very positive, that has faith. And there was great calm. So I wanted just to put it to you. As I said earlier. What do you think in the situation? The word you release in the situation. Your actions in the situation. Will always determine. Are you going to stand? Or are you going to be defeated? I pray that you may stand. In Jesus name. So. Remember what we said. In the book of Luke, chapter 6, verses 45. For, the, for out of the abundance of heart, a man speaketh. So the disciples, let's not blame them this time. They had nothing else in their hearts. My brother, my sister, sometimes don't rebuke that sister. Don't rebuke that brother. Don't rebuke that woman. Why? It is they are responding according to what has been stored in their hearts. They have not been able to guard their hearts. Hallelujah. They release the evidence of their heart. You see, they are asking, even today, there are people really asking, did God stop caring? Pastor, does God enjoy our suffering? Why is God so quiet? An attitude that can never bring an answer. It is only by God's mercy some of us can have deliverance. It is only by God's mercy some of us can get some help. But today I come to tell you, look at Jesus. He did his work. When he came, look here, when he came, the Bible records, when he woke up, the Bible records, look here, he stood, do you see what he says? He said, peace, be still, hallelujah, a connection of the heart of Jesus with the circumstance. Hallelujah. He did not argue with his disciples. Stop arguing with some people. Just do what God wants you to do. You are going to get your solution. Look here. Understand this. Peace. Bible says that there was a great calm. Where did that come from? 
the words of Jesus. It came from the abundance of the heart of Jesus. Hallelujah. May you receive that peace even this time in Jesus' name. May you enjoy that peace. May you understand when Jesus is with me, he is a master of every circumstance. He is a master in every challenge. He is a master. He is powerful. He can overcome. Do you know even demons know Jesus? They may not know you. They may not know your uncle. They may not know many. But celebrate with me. They know Jesus. Let's continue. The disciples could not do anything to the weak because they were afraid and their faith was lacking. So they were disturbed by the weak. I know this is very natural, but together with that, stop being disturbed when Jesus is around. Jesus Somebody said, you cannot give away what you don't have. Praise the Lord. You cannot give what you don't have. But Jesus gave what he has. And he gave it to his disciples. Peace. I say today, receive peace in Jesus' name. Peace is, does not necessarily mean absence of war or argument. Peace means that calmness in the heart, that ability in the heart to be able to enjoy the peace, the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Yeah, the peace that Jesus gives cannot be found in the world. So I don't say on a natural way, you relax. But I say, in a spiritual way, relax in Jesus' name. The disciples could not give peace because they did not have it. What do you have? And you say Jesus had given them peace. Jesus also had given them authority and power. The only thing is, when Jesus gives the peace, the enemy steals away. Hallelujah. It was stolen. They did not guard their hearts. Even miracles. We saw the chip the other day. Guard what you have received. Hallelujah. There are so many things you have received. I begin by saying, guard your heart because of eternal life. Guard your heart because of power and authority. There are so many, 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 many things. But I don't want to dwell on that so much. Let's continue. Guarding your heart. Let's read Philippians 4 6 to 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. In the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. Receive that peace in Jesus' name. The Bible says, in the midst of all what? So when you have peace, it is when you have Jesus in you. It is when you have that faith, saving faith. Hallelujah. The way you got born and came is the way Jesus will keep and protect your life. So you need to give the same trust. And the way is by but in everything, in every challenge, in every situation, there should be a condition of worship and praise in your heart in Jesus' name. I say again, a condition of worship, prayer, and praise should always be in your heart. He says, let your request. So, after you have given thanksgiving, worshiping the Lord, we shall discuss this later. But I want you to see, let your request be known to God. Then after that, and the peace, you see, give him your burden. Invite him in your challenge through prayer. And then after that, you are going to get the peace of God in Jesus' name. When you release your burden to God, then 
the Bible says that peace and it cannot be understood by the mind of a mere man it is a spiritual vitality like that term. the peace of Jesus the peace of Jesus is a spiritual vitality are you right to pray that peace released from the Holy Spirit we get it in our spirits, we get it in our hearts, it is not because I have money it is not because I have the evidence promised, but because I know God in Jesus Christ has given me victory hallelujah, I am more than a conqueror I will win because I know God does not fail. The promises of God will always help me not to be anxious. He will answer prayer. He will help me as I continue in the name of Jesus. You see, it will guard your hearts and the minds. The mind continually is a battlefield. It is through the mind when we receive it in our ears, it goes to our minds. If our minds are not protected, our hearts will be affected. Celebrate God in Jesus' name. So, in another translation, guarding your heart, they have used the word garrison. Garrison. Garrison is what soldiers do. There is what soldiers do. The soldiers garrison a city, meaning they shield the city. No enemy can come in. They protect it. They shield it. So our hearts should be shielded continually in Jesus' name. So there are so many things a believer allows in our hearts in most cases even this time of COVID-19 it is easy to be swayed because there is a lot of information right information correct information false information you see our minds are filled with catapraise many things until we become so fearful until we become we are prayerful but our prayer are made through fear of what the enemy will do it's like what I say, always say children play closing their eyes but uh, placing their hands on their you see they cover their face, but their eyes are still open. Some believers, because of fear, they will always put their hands on the face. We are praying, but they are trying to see what the enemy can do. I pray in Jesus' name that you may have the peace of God when you go to pray. Pray, believing the protection and the hand of God is upon your life in Jesus' name. We read our hearts, and that's where I want us to go. Every believer has the Spirit of God, and you should, should always protect your relationship with the Holy Spirit. This what sometimes we say called the anointing in you. When he was 25 years old, when he became king, and he reigned 29, you see, it was not very normal. 20, he was 25 years old and when he became king he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem he, in the reign, yeah, he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem his mother name was Je okay let's go and he did I want you to see that he did it is like the disciples of Jesus they are with him in the boat but you see this man he knew what is right to do and he but he did not have a royal heart that's what we are talking about. There are conditions of heart. 
that are, we will not allow the anointing in one's life. We will not allow the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. There are some conditions of heart that we will not allow. You may speak too much about the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit does not seem to work in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So he says, but not with a royal heart. What did he do? Number one, look here. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a royal heart. Verses 3. Now it happened as soon as the kingdom was established. Look, that he executed. So he took revenge. His heart was not right. And I would say, may the Lord help us to forgive each other continually. We have been forgiven our sins. In our next race streaming, we shall see one after another the conditions we should gather against. Praise the Lord. We are not going to have it today. But you see, it is, he was established by God. But after he was established, he, he did a plan. He did an evil plan. It was not good in the eyes of the Lord. He executed those who murdered his father, the king. Let's go. So he took revenge. And the Bible says, revenge belongs to the Lord. Number two. Now it happened as soon as the kingdom was established. Let's go number four. However, he did not execute their children, but did as it is written in the law of Moses, saying, the fathers shall not be put to death for the children, nor shall the children be put to death for their father's banner. The person shall die for his own sin. Five. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah and sent over them captains of thousands, captains of hundreds, according to their father's houses throughout Judah and Benjamin. And now, let's go to number six. He also hired 100,000 mighty men of Vela from the house from, from Israel for 100 talents of silver. Let's continue. But the man of God came to him saying, O oh, king, do not let the army of Israel go with you, for the Lord is not with Israel, not with any of the children of Ephraim. But if you go, be gone, be strong in battle. Even so, God shall not shall make you fall before the enemy, for God has power to help and to overthrow. Look here. He did not fully trust the Lord. He hired an army. He is to don't go with that army. Praise the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? He is a king. The man of God comes and tells him, go. But the Lord is not with you. But he still goes. Hallelujah. Get that time. He was not loyal. It's God speaking to us and we are not able to hear. And we are still serving him. When God has asked our hand to give him our hands. Listen. When the Lord says he wants our hearts, listen to me. What is he after? Write this down. The Lord asks your heart and he is asking for your whole life. Not some time, but your whole life should be committed to him. Even in this time of COVID-19, you should be fully committed to him. Number two, it is your personality. The person you are. Allow the Lord to continue working on you. In the name of Jesus. Receive the grace in Jesus name. Then the other thing is this. Our character. We should be like Jeremiah. The Lord would want to mold us again. As we continue with him. Hallelujah. As we guard our hearts. We also examine ourselves so that we may not be like an Amazia who really is doing some things what is right. He goes to fight the enemies of the Lord, but he goes his own way. Even when the man of God says, don't go, don't go.
go this time. Don't do this way. He will still do it. May the Lord help us. Receive grace in Jesus' name. May the time of COVID-19 leave you study because you remain loyal to the Lord. May you remain loyal to the Lord in Jesus' name. So, there is this other thing, our mind. The Lord wants your mind. You cannot give, you cannot say, I, I, I give the Lord my heart and then your mind is not within him. We see it, the enemy will always attack you. And he attacks through the mind. So your mind should be renewed according to the word of God in the book of Romans chapter number 12. We should renew our minds. And finally, there is this thing we call emotions. Emotions. Our anger. You see, you should let the Lord help you to control your anger in Jesus' name. Let the Lord always help you to control your anger in Jesus' name. This man was not loyal to the Lord. He was not even able to control his anger. He executed his servant who murdered his father. May the Lord help us. So, God does not always remember a person is not just the physical appearance. What you should guard, when you guard your heart, you are guarding your whole being. As I go to the next one, God does not look as man looking. Allow me to read, because I see my time is over. Acts chapter 3 verses 22. Acts 13 22. Jesus 
is not to go to battle. And that's where he was caught off guard. But I want us to see. He sinned. But he had a very sorrowful, repentant heart. Hallelujah. He was able to be corrected by God. He was able to be corrected by the man of God. That is the conditions we are talking about. David had a repentant heart. Saul had a rebellious heart. Do you see the difference? Both men are anointed. Both men are under the anointing. But when is a rebellious, he follows his own ways, although he is serving God. The other one is a repentant, although he may fall into sin, he still desires the fellowship of God. May the Lord help us today. As I come to my conclusion, the Bible talks about Jesus of Nazareth, who is our Savior. In the book of Acts chapter 10, verses 35 to 38, that Jesus, God anointed Jesus of what? Nazareth. May you receive this anointing today. I believe every believer has a great reason to protect and cover his life through the heart. The Bible says power of life and the death lies in the tongue. And Jesus has said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. What are you speaking this time of COVID-19? Yes, the government has said something. Do you just cast the government? Casting the government does not change anything. Reacting against what things are happening does not change anything. And it ends Really, it ends the problem. It puts more fire, more fuel to the challenge. But I thank God. I thank God because you can choose to declare COVID-19 has come, but it will leave us and we continue. COVID-19 has come, but our economy will also rise again. Because it is not about man, it is about God. Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible talks how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power. May you, when you guard your heart, you guard the Holy Spirit in you. When you guard the, you guard your heart, you guard the power. That's the anointing we are talking about. And what did Jesus do? Because of his heart, the Bible records he went about doing good. Hallelujah. He went about doing good. He was fought by the enemy through the Pharisees, through the scribes. Not many liked him, but because of the anointing he gathered upon his heart, he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him in the name of Jesus. Can you heard today that God will still, we will continue walking with you. We are weak, but then we are strong because of the Lord, because of God who gives me strength. Hallelujah. I can do all things. That's what Paul said. Through him who strengthens me. Can you are hurt? That you are not, you do not remain negative. That you don't have a bad attitude. That you don't respond in the wrong way. You respond like Jesus, not like his disciples. Disciples we are affected by fear. Jesus affected the situation. I want us to pray. We shall continue when we come back. We shall continue when we come back on Tuesday where we shall see great truth about guarding our hearts. And one of the key truths is that 
Guarding your heart is the secret behind remaining calm in the midst of the storm. I finish. Guarding your heart is the secret behind remaining calm in the midst of the storm. There are so many seasons of storms in our lives. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. Are you going to speak life today? I want to give you an opportunity to change what the devil is doing by declaring what we have been sharing. There is an anointing over your head. Speak something about your life, about your family, about your business, and all things that you would need God in your life. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I lift your name, the name and the name of Jesus. Thank you for giving us victory in Jesus Christ. I have shared your word today. During this very hard and tough time, some people were about to do, were about to make some decisions that would affect their lives negatively. But I pray after this, Jehovah, let this hand choose wisely as you allow the Holy Spirit to influence this heart. I pray also, my Father, that peace which no man can understand may there may it feel the heart of all those who have risen to me and those who shall hear this message after this. I bless your people. Give them victory over every circumstance and situation. In Jesus' name, do we pray and give you praise. Amen. Oh, my